morning although i post the video at 5 p.m it's an early morning here in the uk i thought well if i'm up and i've had a cup of tea i might as well record this episode bringing some footage down onto the timeline i'm going into effects picture in picture grabbing the shape cam i'm going to go into the inspector these are all the controls that we talked about in the inspector and we're going to customize these but i'm not going to do loads today i'm going to explain the layout of the code go into fusion normally when you're doing things inside the code you can be in the code for days but once it's done it's a lot nicer and a lot uh, easier if you're doing a simple title in fact i've just done a title uh, let me show you this title i did this title on christmas day rather pleased with this title actually so if i bring this title 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 down here uh, you'll notice it's blank but in the inspector it's just made up of presets what it is is my shortcuts for my future tutorials so that's the shortcut for select tool then we've got select action i can clear it and then i've got a keyboard control and b for cuts and then down here i've got my numbers and then down here i've got that's the if you want to open the console you can do that shift and zero that's the hotkey manager if you type that into the console it will open the hotkey manager and this one if you type this into the console then it'll open customize toolbar menu this works on both mac and windows so i think i did showed you that in episode one let's get back to where i'm supposed to be the easiest way to get to the file for the node is to be on the fusion page come into effects and then we go into templates edit effects picture in picture once we've got the s cam here just right click and select show folder and it will open on the wrong screen as always now all these are are text files that have a dot setting extension so davinci resolve understands it and inside them is a lua script yours may look different mine have the logo for visual studio code because i have visual studio code set by default visual studio code is superb i recommend it above anything else i'm going to double click this and it will open again on the other screen I'm just going to explain the code first of all because this code is what makes up a macro for the edit and the cut page if you're making a macro or you're just saving a composition out on the fusion page it looks different now in visual studio code I can collapse the main sections these are the sections it's really simple if you have a lot of controls inside your inspector then this just gets longer and longer and longer what we have is the whole thing is tools ordered so everything in here in the tools ordered brackets is the macro we've then got at the top the name of the macro and this is what we named in the macro editor and then we have group operator group operator is where we made it so it was a group so we could open that group inside fusion so here we can double click on here and open this as a group and that allows us to see all the nodes inside our comp but this is a macro we can add nodes into here we can change the parameters if we've made a mistake we can come back in and correct it and then just close it and we can resave it we can right click settings save as what is here is the paths that i've used last so this path here is the path where this lives so you don't have to go digging into your menus and your folders on your explorer you can just click this and save it straight into that path i still do save as because occasionally i'll give it a prefix because if i've made a mistake i can go back to the original so that's why it says group operator up here you may open a macro in a text editor and that says macro operator and what that is is a single node but if you see macro operator in here just change the word macro to group it will become a group and then you can open it and you can edit it inputs are what you see in the inspector the first thing that says main input one that makes it an effect you need an input on the node so you can bring in what's from the timeline then underneath you see input one equals instance input this is a instance very similar to a node instance that we did when we're building the composition but it's a control instance it's a copy of the control that's in the node and one of the confusing things in davinci resolve is you need code both in the inspector and in the node to be able to see a control in the inspector but if you look at input one input two input three input four input five and input six they correlate 
to the first six controls that are inside the inspector. And one of the things that we can do really easily is we can just move them around. So let's say we wanted the size control at the top. All we do is we take all these up to here and we use control and X to cut them. I'm then going to come down to where it says position source. I'm going to press enter to pop them in here and then control and V and paste them in here and then save it. Now nothing's changed in the inspector because what we need to do is to bring that macro back into DaVinci Resolve. But while we're building it, what we can do is just highlight anywhere in here and press Control and A to select all of them and then Control and C to copy them. If we then come back into Fusion, what we can do is we can delete this group and we can paste it. I'm going to highlight the first node, so when I paste it, so Control and V pastes the new settings. Now if you look in the inspector, let's just bring this back up. Now if you look in the inspector, the controls are in that different order. We've got input 5 is now at the top, and then 6, 7 and 8 and so on come down. If we scroll down here till we get to input 1, then that has moved down. So by cutting these and moving them, you can move the controls inside the inspector anywhere you want. You can also have more than one control in the inspector. And this is quite rare, but it's good to know. If I just take this input 5, and I'm in VS Code, so I'm using VS Code shortcuts, and make a duplicate, but again it won't show, because these have to be unique. When I say unique, they can be anything, they don't need to be the word input. What I can call this, let's call this extra shape. I'm going to save the code. I'm going to select all the code. I'm going to copy the code. Come back into Fusion. Delete what we had before and then paste him. And now what you'll see is at the top we've got two controls exactly the same. And they work the same. They're connected. The use case for that would be if you're hiding controls and revealing controls in different parts of the inspector, you may want a control to be in two places. And this section where I've put extra shape and it says input 5, input 6, input 7 can be anything that starts with a letter. It can't start with a number because this is actually Lua script. So what I'm going to do is highlight this and I'm going to delete it. And then I'm going to save it, select all and copy, come back into here, remove that node and then put it back. And in the inspector now that control has gone. So that's how you move the controls. The input section, so inputs ordered, are the controls which are inside the inspector. So basically that is it at the moment for what's inside the inspector. Now what you can do as well, we can put, if we come in here, we can do a comment. So if I drop this down here, I can do, again, keyboard shortcuts for VS Code. I can then put um, in here. We then come to the outputs. The outputs is really easy because it's just the last node before the media out. So the last node in our composition was position and the source is the output. So that's outputs and then info. This is actually because I've resaved it inside Fusion more than once. So all this is saying is where to have the nodes in Fusion. Tools ordered. This is the nodes. So if I open this, this is all the nodes. And you can see here, let's open it fully. What you can do is you can see the node name. You can then see what the original node name was. So media XF was a transform. It's just saying, do we show the controls? Well, no, we don't. The name set is, is media XF showing on the node in Fusion. That's all that means. And then view info is where it is. It's just a set of coordinates of where it is on the fusion graph. Below that we've got the main mask and that is the S-N-G-O-N shape. I'm not going to try and pronounce it. Below that it's saying don't show the controls and then you can turn these on and off inside the editor just under the view control. And then the input is saying what we want to do is we want to take the cap style input value is zero. Now we've not shown that control inside the inspector what we've done is we've set that as a parameter when we was building the comp. And one of the things you'll notice is you can change all the settings of a node in the code, but you might have to write a few of these because 
these only appear in the code if you've changed them. If the default, so if we didn't change that cap style, so if we left the rounded end cap on, that wouldn't be there because it's default. It's what's part of the node. Because we've changed it and we put it to flat, the value then is, is zero. So where it says flat is zero, rounded is one, and then square is two. That's the value of them inside the code. And it starts at zero because it's Lua. Then again, view info, where was the node on the screen? And then we've got the border, which was the instance. And you can see all the settings where we've put the modifier on. So inputs is the modifier. Coming down here a little further, then we've got all the settings. What we did is we de-instance the colors under the style. So as you can see, you've got the red, green, blue and alpha input there. And that is everything in the style. Now the comments nest, the frame render script nest, start render script nest and end render script nest is what you see underneath the settings tab in the node. So it's what's in here. So comments are always visible. Frame render script isn't visible, but you can make it visible. As we continue going down the code, all we see is all of the nodes and modifiers. So this is the anim curve modifier. And as you can see, there's the settings, duration, easing, sign. You can just change them inside here. Um, on Anim Curves 3, the speed, the time scale, we set to zero. So that's been added into the code. Then we come further down here, Anim 4, and so on and so on. And depending on how long your comp is, is how long this is. If we go to the end, this is 804 lines long. As I said in the first episode, when we built the composition, I always put an M1 and this is the M1 here. It was a merge node and I selected it last. So it comes to the bottom and then here I can do labels and presets here below this. And this is where we'll, I'm going to make a coffee now. And this is where we'll move on to add labels, drop downs and presets.